So then, we know we have to make a schema to describe how the data on our graph will look. So let's make that schema now. Inside server, I'll make a new folder and I'm going to call this, ta-da, schema. And inside that, we'll create a file and we're also going to call this schema.js. All right, so the first thing we need to do inside this file is require GraphQL. That's the main GraphQL package we installed in the last video. So we'll say const GraphQL is equal to require and then GraphQL. All right, so in this file is where we're going to define our schema. Remember, our schema will describe the data on this kind of graph. It describes the object types, the relations between those object types, and it describes how we can reach into the graph to interact with that data, whether that be to query and retrieve data or to mutate or change the data. So either way, we're jumping into this graph to interact with it, right? So we'll start off by inside this schema describing the object types we want on our graph. So the graph right here is going to have two object types on it, books and authors. So ultimately, we need to describe these two object types in the schema file and the relationship between them and also how to query these object types to get data back. So we're just going to start off with one object type to begin with, the book. So the way we define object types in GraphQL is a little bit unusual at first. What we need to do is we need to grab something from this GraphQL package to do it. So I'm going to say const and I'm going to use a bit of ES6 destructuring here, which allows us to grab variables out of something else. So I'm going to require or not require destructure GraphQL object type and pay attention to the capitalization here. Capital G, Q, L, O and T. All right. That's really important. So I'll set that equal there, graph QL. So this destructuring, what it's going to do is grab this variable or this function for us from this thing right here, from this package. We're taking it out and storing it now so we can use this inside this file. All right. So once we've done that, we can now define a new type. So we'll call this type a book type and we'll set this equal to a new graph QL object type. All right, so that's the thing we've just grabbed right here. So this right here is a function which takes in an object and this object is going to define what this book type is all about. So first of all, we'll give this a name. I'm going to call it book. And then we need to also define the fields on this object type. So remember, the fields are going to be things like a name property a genre, an ID, that kind of thing. So this fields property is actually going to be a function. So we'll do our parenthesis and then an arrow, then another parenthesis and then an object inside that. Now, the reason this needs to be a function is because later on, when we have multiple types and they have references to one another, then unless we wrap those fields in a function, one type might not necessarily know what another type is. Does that make sense? It might not at the minute, but later on when we introduce other types as well, I'll explain this a little bit more and why we need it. And I'll show you what happens if we don't wrap it in a function. All right. So this right here, this function is going to return this object and we need to define our different fields inside here. So first of all, the ID, the ID is going to be maybe a string of random numbers or something like that. So when we're defining these fields, we need to say what type it is. Is it a string? Is it an integer or some other type? So we'll open up an object and we're going to say the type is going to be something. Now, we can't just do string. Again, this is one of the nuances of GraphQL. We have to use a special string, a GraphQL string, in order for it to understand the type. So again, we're going to grab that from GraphQL by doing a comma and then saying graph ql string. So again, we're destructuring here and we're grabbing this thing from this package as well. So now we have access to this in this file. So the type of this ID is going to be a GraphQL string. All right. 
So a string of seemingly random numbers or something like that. So that's one field that we're going to have on each book. What is another field? The name of the book. So again, we need to define a type for this and it will be a string again. So we'll say GraphQL string for this. And then finally, we'll have a genre property. And again, this will be of type string. So we'll say GraphQL string for that one as well. So right now what we've done is we've defined our first object type on this graph and it's a book type. It's called book and it has these fields right here in ID, name and genre and they're all of type GraphQL string. This is GraphQL saying, okay, I'm expecting a string for this type and this type and this type. Okay, so all three of them and we've wrapped all of those fields inside a function an ES6 function which is returning this object and again that's because when we have multiple types later on this is going to help overcome any kind of reference errors all right and we'll explore that a little bit more when we have multiple types so this book type here is a first step in defining how our graph will look we've said that on our graph we're going to have this object type which is a book right but this is just one part of our schema based on this diagram down here Remember, we have other things in here, an author type. We also have these connections between the different objects and we have these entry points as well where we jump into the graph. So this thing right here, it's a good first step, but it is just the first step in defining our whole schema. Remember, ultimately, we want to pass all of this schema into this thing right here. All right. So we've started to define this. In the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our entry points into the graph so that we can query this data. These are called root queries and we'll take a look at those in the very next tutorial.